Audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. A growing believer will delight in and love the Word of God. You'll love it because as you read, study, memorize, and dig into the Word of God, it will refresh you. God gave us His Word as spiritual nourishment. It feeds our souls. And Pastor Greg Laurie says it's good to have a hearty meal. The Bible restores you. The Bible refreshes you. The Bible transforms you. This is the day when the lost are found. hungry, you felt weak, not just hunger pains, not just in a hangry mood, you actually felt sluggish and powerless. Food is at the top of your mind. Well, we can start to feel weak spiritually, but so many times our spiritual food isn't at the top of our minds. Today on A New Beginning, Pastor Greg Laurie points out just what God's Word does for the weary traveller on the road of life. We'll see it gives us actual power for living and we shouldn't deprive ourselves. The refreshing power of the Word of God. Listen, if you want to be a growing Christian, if you want to be a successful Christian, if you want to be a believer that brings forth spiritual fruit, as Jesus says He wants us to bring forth, then you need to be a Bible-studying Christian. And as a believer, we are either progressing or we're regressing. We're either going forward or we're going backwards. And the moment we stop the forward momentum is when we begin the backward regression. I read not long ago about a a coach, a guy who trains people uh, for a living. And most of his clients were quite overweight, some 60, 70 pounds overweight. This guy, this trainer, was in perfect shape, washboard, abs, ate the right foods, loved to exercise. And he really couldn't relate to what his clients were going through. So this guy decided to intentionally put on 70 pounds to see what it was like. And so he started by changing his diet from the foods he used to eat to fattening foods. For instance, for breakfast he had Captain Crunch cereal and then he would have a snack. It would be banana bread and he would have chicken Alfredo (laughs) pasta for dinner and lots of corn dogs and donuts in between. By the way, this diet sounds really good to me (laughs) except the Captain Crunch cereal. I could live without that. But all the rest, this sounds amazing. Well, it was exhilarating to him because at first there was no difference in his body. He still looked good but then he noticed the first thing to go with the abs. And then he started getting flabby. Then he found that his blood pressure was going up. He was tired all the time. He found himself lethargic and depressed. And to me, this is the picture of what it's like when we start going in the wrong direction spiritually. Instead of eating the nutritious message of God's Word, we fill our lives with spiritual junk food. So when that happens, you need a restart. You need a reboot. You need a refresh. And I want to talk to you about the refreshing power of the Word of God. Because the reality is, as believers, we all have those moments when we stumble, when we trip up, when we make that wrong decision. We think that wrong thought. And we need to repent. We need to reboot. Uh, We need to be revived and refreshed. And that's what we're going to be focusing on together. Because you want to build your life as a Christian on Christ and His Word. At the end of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus gave this summary statement in Matthew 7. Whoever hears these words of mine and puts them into practice, he is a wise man who builds his house on the rock. And the rain came down and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against the house but it did not fall because its foundation was on the rock. But then Christ goes on to say whoever hears these sayings of mine and does not put them into practice he is a foolish man who builds his house on the sand. And the rain came down and the streams rose and it fell with a great 
crash. Look, every life is gonna be tested. Every one of us is gonna face storms in life as followers of Jesus. So make sure you're built on the right foundation, which is a relationship with Jesus himself and of course, on God's word. Don't build your Christian experience on experience. Don't build your faith on your fickle emotions. Build your life on Christ and His Word. Because as you read, study, memorize, and dig into the Word of God, it will refresh you. Psalm 19 verse seven says, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The word that the psalmist uses there for converts means to revive, to restore, and to transform. Now when we say the law of the Lord, that could just as easily be translated the word of the Lord or simply the Bible. In other words, the Bible restores you. The Bible refreshes you. The Bible transforms you. I can think of so many times in my life where my mind was going in the wrong direction. Have you ever been gripped by fear, worry, or anxiety and found by just quoting the right scripture that it sort of righted you? Or when you're dealing with pain or with grief, I compare it to being out on the ocean. Have you ever gone over the falls, like going over the front of a wave and you're in white water? It's like you're in a washing machine and you don't know which way is up. So if you have a boogie board or some surfboard and a leash attached to your ankle, you know one thing is certain. That boogie board, that flotation device will always go to the surface because people have become disoriented when they've gone over the falls, especially if the wave is big and they don't know which way is up and instead of going up, they go down. So here's what you do. If you've got that leash, grab the leash and go in the direction of your surfboard or your boogie board and get your head above the water and get a gulp of air because a new set of waves might be coming. That's grief. It just turns you upside down. You don't know what to think. You don't know what's going on. Your emotions are running amok. Grab the leash. What is the leash? The leash is the Word of God. And it pulls me to the surface and I can get my eyes on Jesus for a moment and it can get me sorted out and back in alignment with God Again, how important the Word of God is in our life. The Word of God restores us. It refreshes us. It transforms us. Listen to this. Success or failure in the Christian life depends on how much of God's Word you get into your life on a regular basis and how obedient you are to it. Let me repeat that for emphasis. Success or failure in the Christian life depends on how much of God's word you get into your life on a regular basis and how obedient you are to it. God told his people back in the book of Joshua, if they want to succeed spiritually, they needed to constantly be looking at his word. Joshua 1.8, it said, this book of the law, or the word of God, shall not depart from your mouth. Meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. And if you do this, your way will be prosperous and you will have good success. Listen, a growing believer will delight in and love the Word of God. You'll love it. It's not like you'll dread reading it. you look forward to reading it. Psalm 1 describing the happy man says, happy is the man that doesn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the word of the Lord and in it does he meditate day and night. The psalmist said in Psalm 119, how I love your commandments, Lord. They give my life back to me because your unfailing love and your words are true. You're listening to Pastor Greg Laurie, Senior Pastor of Harvest Christian Fellowship in Riverside, California. Today, Pastor Greg is presenting his message on the importance of Scripture. It's called The Refreshing Power of the Word of God. Let's continue. How do you know the Bible is the Word of God? Sometimes we'll doubt it. Can I believe the Bible? Can I be certain that this really is God's word to me. So if you have a Bible, why don't you just grab it right now and hold on to it? 
Maybe it's an app on your <laughs> tablet or your phone, but I want you to think about this book that we call the Bible. This is God's message to us. Technically speaking, the Bible is not one book, but it's actually 66 different books written over a 1500 year span of time. Its words were written by authors, 40 of them, uh, all told, uh, from every walk of life. Kings, peasants, philosophers, fishermen, statesmen, and scholars. Yet all of the authors of the Bible write about one primary theme, and that theme is God's redemption of mankind. And each one of these individuals was inspired by God to write these words. Second Peter 1.20 says, you must understand no prophecy in scripture came about by the prophets themselves as they wanted to prophesy, but it was the Holy Spirit who moved the prophets to speak from God. How do I know the Bible is the word of God? Here's one point. I know the Bible is the word of God because it gave me the experience it claimed it would give me. Now don't uh, say, well, Greg, you shouldn't build your life and experience. This is just one of many points as to why I believe the Bible is the Word of God. But I believe it because everything the Bible promised to me was true. Everything the Bible says to me, I have found to be true. For instance, the Bible says, God would forgive me of my sin. Verse Psalm 1, 9 says, if I will confess my sin, he's faithful and just to forgive me my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. So I read that verse and I said, Lord, cleanse me of my sin. One of the first things I remember experiencing as a brand new Christian was the sensation of having a massive weight removed from me. Now, I didn't know what I'd just done. I prayed and asked Jesus into my life. I hadn't read that I should cast all of my care upon him for he cared for me. I hadn't read any verses yet, but I remember feeling this weight lifted off of me. That was God forgiving me of my sins. The Bible says to me, if any man be in Christ, he is an altogether different kind of person. The old things have passed away. Behold, everything becomes fresh and new. I became a different person after I gave my life to Christ. I saw that change inside of me and I knew it was real. I tried to be a better person. I wanted to be a more caring person. I wanted to be different than I was, but I couldn't change myself. And suddenly with Christ living in me and reading the Word of God, I saw that these things happened for me as the Bible said they would. I read in the Bible that God could give to me a peace that passes all human understanding. Because in Philippians we read, don't worry about anything, pray about everything, and the peace of God that passes all human understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Have you experienced that peace that passes all understanding? Number two, I believe the Bible is the word of God and that it is true because it's confirmed by science. Now some of you might be thinking, no, Greg, you're wrong. Science and the Bible contradict each other. That's not necessarily true. People over the years have scoffed at the Bible, saying it's so unscientific. You know, they, they, the people that believe the Bible, they're fools. And well, it's actually the Bible that told us that the Lord sits on the circle of the earth. It's the Bible that told us the earth was round, not flat, as many of the experts thought at one stage in human history. It's the Bible that tells us and told us that the stars in the sky were innumerable. But of course, astronomers said, well, that's ridiculous. We can actually count the stars. And they had their count, and then they'd get a more powerful telescope and add some more numbers to that, and on it grew. But the Bible tells us that God stretched forth the heavens into a limitless expanse which can never be measured and filled it with stars which are as numerous as the sands upon the seashore. So the Bible was ahead of science in many ways. But listen, the Bible is not a scientific textbook. If it were, it would be much larger and much less comprehensible. The objective of the scripture is not to tell us how the heavens go, but how to go to heaven and how to know God. Here's another point. The Bible is true because it's the one book that dares to predict the future. Not once, not twice, 
but hundreds of times with 100% accuracy. Think of all the scriptures in the Old Testament that pointed to the arrival of the Messiah. The Bible told us in the Old Testament Messiah would be born of a virgin. He'd be born in Bethlehem. He would be crucified. And the Bible said in the Old Testament He would be crucified before the actual act of crucifixion even existed. The Bible is the one book that tells us what is coming in our future as well. I'm not talking about Nostradamus here or the Mayan prophecies. I'm talking about a reliable source. And that really is the mark of a true messenger from God or a book that comes from God. Can it predict the future? And the answer with the Bible is yes. Then I could go on and talk a lot about how archeology span confirms the Bible. It doesn't contradict it. It seems like whenever there's a new archeological find, it confirms what the Bible said. And I could talk about so many things happening in our world right now that are fulfillments of Bible prophecy the turmoil in the Middle East, and much, much more. As we're reminded in 2 Timothy 3, all scripture is inspired by God, or another translation says, all scripture is breathed by God. Pastor Greg Laurie with insights on why we can rely on the Bible as the Word of God. Our message today on A New Beginning is titled The Refreshing Power of the Word of God. And there's more to come next time. We've talked a lot about the Bible, God's love letter to His children, and how He cares for His kids. Well, Pastor Greg has a further comment that he wanted to share. So as you've been listening today, maybe you've thought to yourself, man, I wish I had this relationship with God that is being talked about. Well, you can. He's only a prayer away. You see, becoming a Christian, it doesn't take years. It doesn't take months. It doesn't take weeks. It it doesn't even take hours. It can happen in a moment. That's how it happened for me. I just heard the gospel, and all of a sudden I realized this is all true. And maybe you've realized that as well. Let me ask you, would you like Jesus Christ to come into your life? Would you like him to forgive you of your sin? Would you like this relationship with God we've been talking about today? If so, why don't you just pray a simple prayer with me? Say this to God, Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner, but I know that you're the Savior who died on the cross for my sin and rose again from the dead. Jesus, I turn from my sin And I choose to follow you from this moment forward as my Savior and Lord, as my God and friend. Thank you for hearing this prayer. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, did you just pray that prayer? Let me just say congratulations. You've made the right decision. That's right. And to help you begin to live this new life, this life where you're at peace with God and can begin to enjoy the peace of God, Well, let us send you a new Believer's Growth Pack. It's the perfect resource for someone who's new to the faith. Just ask for a new Believer's Growth Pack when you call 1-800-PRAY-FOR-ME. That's 1-800-772-936. And the team would love to pray with you too. Call 1-800-772-936 today. Next time, more insights on the importance of God's Word and how it refreshes the lives of believers. Today's message from Pastor Greg Laurie was called The Refreshing Power of the Word of God. If you'd like to listen again, just download the free Vision Christian Media app where it's available as a podcast, along with more inspiring Christian content. Just search your app store for Vision Christian Media. Station sponsor. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.